Arc Beyond Ascension Part 9 Hello everyone, and welcome back to our journey. So I decided to go through and take Finny out to chop down some trees, because, uh, yeah, the RGs were busy making some babies, because we need to go through and start ourselves a little army, uh, or at least we can breed the perfect soldier. And then I went back and I decided I was going to go through and craft up a whole bunch of stuff, so yeah, I've got everything cooking over there, and then I decided I was going to light the forges, because I needed more charcoal, and I needed to go through and smelt this metal. Went out and grabbed myself a loot drop because I get distracted. This base literally has loot drops like all the time. And it had some pretty decent loot because I was pretty broke when it came to crystal. Now I decided I was going to go through and I was going to hatch myself some RG eggs because I needed a new RG because they were constantly breeding. And I needed one I could actually fly around and use. And it was the perfect weather. It was not too hot or too cold. So all these babies hatched without issues. But unfortunately there's nothing too crazy in here. No crazy mutations. But I did go through and decide, you know what? Let's just eat them all. I am sure our runt, who is very small, needs some nutrition. So I went through and I gobbled up all those babies, and uh, yeah, we will still be looking for the perfect soldier. So I went through and built myself a shovel, and I tilled our gardens here. And we don't have too much in the gardens at this point in time. But uh, yeah, they are growing, except for this one. It's kind of just full of crap, and there's a seed in there. But yeah, that was kind of a crappy design. Yes, I did that. I went there. Sorry. But uh, yeah, it should be there eventually, and then I went back through and I basically swapped all the resources. I have plenty of spark powder, and I started crafting up a whole bunch of gunpowder. As I did have plans in the near future to go through and try to tackle one or two of the artifact caves. And then I set out to try and find what to do next by everything crafted up, and I spotted myself an Alpha Carno. But I decided I was going to get distracted and go grab the drop first, because that was more important, and it didn't risk potentially killing me, whereas the Carno was a little bit scary. But then once I checked at the drop and I got some decent stuff actually, I headed over and I said hi. Told him I'm going to kick your butt and uh, yeah, I'm going to eat your corpse. And then he laughed at me and decided to walk away and I took offense to that so I started trying to attack him from behind. Thinking that that would give me the upper hand. Little did I know this guy was stacked and he basically destroyed my bird. Yep, he made a look fool of both me and our bird so we went home with our heads down low realizing this was not going to happen today. So I took out one of my other birds and decided I was going to take him out instead since my last bird is basically beaten to a pulp. And then I was walking around trying to find some tames or flying around and I noticed this scrumptious tasty looking bacon. And I went to go eat it and I smacked it once in the face and then I realized it was a level 140. And I planned to take him back to my base but then he started sucking on my RG's toes like it was a buy one get one half off deal for drumsticks at KFC. Needless to say, these chicken legs were not for sale, so I threw him dead on the ground and decided we would tame him on the lower portion of the mountain here. And I actually was in a prime spot to do it, as there was nothing around that was going to kill me. At least I hope not, because that's the snow and you never know. But uh, yeah, he was dumb. Pretend I didn't miss that first shot, and then I started taming him. And I did not have too many issues whatsoever, but then he started to move around. So I thought, potentially, you know, maybe he was torpor running. And I was determined to chase him down to show him who was boss, but turns out he was actually just playing games and tricked me. He was trying to eat me, so I continued to have to go through and try and knock him out. And uh, yeah, I was kind of meshing into the ground here, which concerned me a little, but uh, no issues whatsoever. And then I was kind of scared because he still wasn't knocked out, so I called my RG down for help, realizing that I had really screwed up falling down here. And I went back up to the top where it was a lot safer and not near his giant mouth because I saw what he did to Archie's toes and I did not want him to do that to my face. And then eventually he did knock out and thank goodness he was kind of meshed because that last error would have completely screwed up the taming effectiveness. And then this dumb looking sloth guy ruined my day. I ran out of stam because I was just being foolish and he went through and decided to pummel me to a complete pulp. I literally almost died of my Archie and I had no way to escape. It was a very, very crappy situation. All right, that's the last fecal joke. I promise. Anyways, we did manage to go through and kill him, and then once we did, I set out on the rock because I was scared and terrified that basically even the wind was going to knock me over at this point because my RG was pretty darn low. And I had managed to go back up and toss some prime meat in him, so he was taming up without too many issues, and he was actually in a pretty decent spot, so nothing should be able to get to him. And then I saw the perfect little snack. I needed some more prime meat, and I saw a baby direwolf running along all there by himself with no parents which meant it was a perfect opportunity to snatch him up when nobody was looking. And there wasn't just one, he also had a brother too, so I went through and I found them, and I ate them too. And now that I had a whole bunch of prime meat, I went back to my guy, and I tossed it on into him. And uh, yeah, this was going to be pretty darn good. I was pretty excited about this. He would continue taming up. And it didn't look like he had lost any taming effectiveness, as I had showed up just in time. But then I put in the regular raw meat just in case so I didn't run into that same issue again. And then I headed back out to the island I had found my twin sabers on earlier, 
looking for any other victims I could find some primate for, and I found myself another saber. This must be Saber Island, because there was another one. But, uh, yeah, he was low level, and he was weak, so I basically went through and I showed him that this world is only meant for the strong, and I disposed of him because he was weak. But then I found a baby, too, and I realized this was not just Saber Island, this was Baby Saber Mutation Island. This saber also had a mutation. So this island must have some funky magic going on, because every single thing here seems to have mutations. And then I started to work my way back towards my guy, as I knew I needed to give him this meat before he woke up. And then upon getting him back, I realized that, for some reason, I could not actually get to him. He had disappeared and fallen into the earth. The mountain had literally swallowed him whole. I just could not get in there. Yes, he had meshed underneath the mountaintop, which uh, sucked, and I was really disappointed because this was a great find, and, uh, yep, couldn't do anything about it. So I went up and I tried to unrender him by going to some more far, far away to grab myself a loot drop, hoping that maybe if I unrendered or re-rendered, he'd pop back up, and realizing and not wanting to accept the fact that I had probably just gotten arced. And then I went and grabbed some crystal to kill some time, and I made my way back over. And, uh, yeah, he, he was still trapped. So I got some oil too, and uh, I was just not knowing what to do. I was kind of frustrated because it was a really good find that I had spent a lot of time trying to get all this prime meat. But then, as I went my way back, I saw that his taming effectiveness was slowly falling down. He had eaten all the food, and he still was not tamed. So you may be wondering why I built the trap here, but actually, after he had woke up, I went down and I managed to goad him all the way over to the edge of the rock, and I was actually able to pull him out of the mesh with the archie and toss him on the ground. So I went through and was able to actually find him again, and then I baited him into this super simple trap that I had designed, and proceeded to go through and knock him out. Now, the only issue was that we were out in the snow biome, and basically anything and everything did want to see us dead and potentially eat us for a snack, so I was going to have to be extremely careful. And then I realized how cheap I was, because I walked up and made sure I got those nine arrows back from his face, because I did not want to have to make nine more arrows. My goal was to never have to craft another arrow in this game again. So I went through and I proceeded to chop down all of the surrounding trees with the intent to try and make some wooden spikes to keep our friends safe from all of the hungry, hungry predators around us. And I laid down the final spike, and uh, yeah, he seemed like he was in a pretty good spot on the beast. There was nothing bad around wanting to kill him, and uh, yeah, you can see it from here. He was fully engulfed, so the only thing that potentially could hit him is an Argy, or if like a Uteranus decided to walk over it, but we were just going to hope that it didn't happen. And then I went through and started working my way back towards the base, as I needed to go through and get a whole bunch of prime meat for this guy, but I grabbed the drop on the way. And then I went through and I decided to craft some couple of standing torches because I could not get these eggs to hatch. And then once I lit them up and the area was feeling awfully cozy, I chucked out the eggs. And one by one, I slowly watched all of these babies hatch, knowing that uh, exactly what they were going to be used for. They had no idea that their life was going to be so short. So I hope they enjoyed this scenic view on the beach because they were about to be food for a hungry piggy. And it turns out I got really, really lucky. There wasn't just four of them. There was actually seven of them. And not a single one of these seven was worth keeping. So, as you can imagine, I devoured each and every single one of them. Runt got his tasty fill, or so he thought he would. I made him do all the work, and then I was going to take the meat and go feed it to the pig instead. And then just when I thought all of our work was done, I found that another RG had actually snuck out. He had broken out of his egg underneath his parents and was trying to run away. So I quickly put a stop to that, and I ended his life. And then I went through and I looked at all the prime meat we had, and I transferred over to our birds so it would not expire because, yeah, we can't carry meat to save our lives, and I had almost a hundred of it. And I built myself up some new fur gear because I was actually freezing when I had last been in the snow biome, and I did not want to die. And then I returned back to our piggy, opened up the area, and I tossed in all the prime meat, hoping that this guy would tame up without too many issues. But I just knew that it was going to take literally forever because, again, I still did not have kibble and something I still had to work towards. But for now, this prime meat was going to have to do, and he should not be able to wake up, but I did have an Arjun that tried to come up and attack me, so I decided to knock him into the water and send him to an early grave. And then eventually I made my way back, and uh, yeah, our little buddy was finally taming up. Now, I didn't go through and name him yet. I was thinking, though, either Bacon or Jimmy Dean suited him well. Let me know down in the comments which one you guys think I should name him. And after that, I looked at my pig, and he had a long life ahead of him. But I also realized that I was going to throw him in a Pokeball in the near future because I did not want him to starve, and I had really no use for him until the boss fight started. So this is more kind of a early tame, getting ready for the boss fights, but I didn't plan on using him for much else outside of that. And then I made my way back to my base here, and I said I was going to go through and check on my crops, because I really needed this kibble production to go, and I was actually shocked. We had almost a hundred different potatoes in there, hundred plus corn, and almost a hundred lemons. And then I also got a treasure map from some of the battles over there, the very first one I've gotten so far. And I opened it up, and I looked, and it was clear over in the Redwoods, which I did have an intent to go through and do, and I wanted to go through and go to the Redwoods. 
as I was going to need sap to actually go through and make the superior kibble. So I went through and built myself a tree platform and realized I was going to need a whole bunch of cementing paste in order to make this happen. But for the time being, I just continued going through and figuring out what I could do to get cryopods because I was actually going to need that even before I got the kibble. And I realized I actually had all the necessary materials to actually make the cryo fridge, just not the cryopods. So I walked over to the nearest loot drop over in the Oasis and loaded up all the materials that I needed and crafted myself the cryo fridge. And we were off to a pretty good start here. There's not too many concerns. And I looked at the cryo fridge and realized that there was two main problems. I needed oil and I needed polymer. But I made my way back over to the base and I went through and I placed my cryo fridge down in what I thought was an appropriate spot so I could check out the sunset when I figured out what creatures I wanted. And I went through and I started harvesting up some crystal because even though I had enough crystal to go through and make a couple of cryopods, I basically had none to my name and I was pretty broke. And I knew I was going to be needing this for a whole bunch of stuff in the future. And in this next scene here, I basically wish I had actually had live commentary because I literally said, oh, sh because, uh, yeah, I ran into that Karcha and uh, he literally was like 100 feet up the hill from where there was crystal and it scared the living hell out of me. I was terrified and I wish that I had a live reaction to show you guys because, yeah, that was uh, that was definitely a moment. And then I figured I was going to watch those mammoths to see if the Karcha tried to eat him, but I think the Karcha may have been brain dead. Or maybe they don't move until something initially hits them. Either way, he did not seem to care about me or the Mammoth. And then I spotted a level 135 Megatherium, and I realized I really needed to get this kibble because there was a whole bunch of great tames out there that were probably going to die if I was not fast enough. And then I found my first real good source of oil, and I went through and I harvested it up, knowing that I was going to be needing this for gasoline in the future, as actually I needed this to be able to go through and use gasoline to power all the different benches that I was going to have back at the base, and on top of that, I also realized that I was going to want to go through and build myself a chainsaw, as the chainsaw is now an engram available on the island, even if you don't have any previous survivor experience. And then I finally made my way to the top of Blue Obelisk, where I was going to go through and use this as a base of sorts to craft my cryopods. But unfortunately, there was a whole bunch of bad stuff that wanted to kill me. So I started by playing Hero when I picked up the wolf that was trying to gobble up that Anki, and I saved his life. Or so I thought I did, there was an entire pack of wolves who I didn't think was going to be an issue since I was just floating above them, smacking them in the head. But I was wrong on so many levels. After they used that pack call, they completely chunked my health from almost three-fourths all the way down. So even though they had the muscle to take me out, they did not have the brains because they literally just followed me down this hill and fell into an endless abyss down this slope. So I went back up, realizing that I may be not as strong as them, but I am sure a lot smarter. And uh, yeah, there was one more who thought he outsmarted me, but I got them all off the cliff, made my way over, and I chucked everything that I was going to be needing into here to craft the cryopods, as it was making me a bit heavy to fly around with all of that extra metal and resources. And then, as I was working my way down towards the beach areas where I could find myself some penguins because I needed some organic polymer, I happened to get distracted with another drop. I just had to go through and make sure I wasn't going to die, because I was fearful every time I got off in the snow that I was going to get palaviaed. And there was another sap collector that actually put me at three different sap collectors so far, so I definitely need to go through and get to the Redwoods ASAP. I then got distracted again as I realized I had next to no silica pearls, and these ones are literally just sitting out in the open, and they were pretty easy to grab. That was definitely something I was going to be needing to start farming if I planned to go through and build myself a Utahrana saddle, or of course, you know, the more electronics I was going to need for like a chemistry bench, I would definitely be needing these pearls. I then figured I'd go through and grab some obsidian as well, as I knew I was actually going to need some cementing paste, and for the time being, I did not have all that much, so this would be a good backup if I needed to go through and craft some using the stone and the obsidian. I then realized I was fat as all could be, and I was pretty slow on my RG, so I figured I'd work my way up to this castle here, as I knew there was an explorer note on the inside. And I was going to go through and basically just get this for the levels and kill a couple of things and boost my weight, so my journey was going to be significantly faster back. And then I was met with a wonderful surprise. Instead of having to look for the penguins, the penguins found me. So as soon as I finished taking out this basic level enemy who had no idea what had just hit him, I accidentally smacked a mammoth before hitting the penguins. So I had to go through and fight him, and man, mammoths deal a whole bunch of damage. And I also happened to make the big resident, the Megatherium, angry too, and there was no way I was going to deal with this guy as he was angry as all could be. And I was pretty low on health, so I did not want to risk it, so I baited him off the cliff as well. And I went through and harvested up a whole bunch of penguins. And I went to go take out the total load I got, and it was just over two stacks. And this RG was PO'd. He wanted all those penguins to himself, but uh, yeah, I really didn't feel like fighting him. So I just kept flying to do my thing, and I worked my way back up to the top of Blue Ob. Then as I was transferring all my materials from my RG over to my inventory so I could load them into the obelisk, I actually got attacked by an RG, and he happened to hit the Mega Ethereum as well, and I wanted absolutely no part in that. So I went through and I managed to get them baited away from this area, and I was able to go through and craft up some cryopods. This first little set of cryopods was actually going to go through and give me six cryopods in total, so I was pretty happy about that. And then I realized if I wanted to go through and craft any more, 
that I was probably gonna need another material. And I went to go look and I just needed some crystal. And fortunately for me, the top of Blue Olisk is covered in a plethora of crystals. So I went through and farmed up about a hundred of it. And then I tossed it in and I made myself five more cryopods. So at this point in time, I now had myself 11 cryopods in total, and I was pretty thrilled as this is going to make taming a whole lot easier because once I tame the creature, I would not have to worry about taking a raft or walking it back or possibly carrying it back with the RG. And then we made our way back and I had a whole bunch of organizing to do because I had found a whole bunch of new loot and my place was a hot mess. And I think this is a good place to go through and call it an end to our journey. Alright guys, if you did enjoy today's video, then please consider leaving a like and subscribing if you're not already.